see how. If they want Bashir's wool, I get all the money, right? Well, you raised him. What do I buy? I never had money before. Oh no, he doesn't look well. They told me I'd find help here in Mecca. And you have. See hum. Papa, where are you going? We can't just leave. We have to take care of this man first. But but what about Bashu? Remember what the Quran teaches about charity, Siham. For those who give in charity, men and women, and loan to Allah a beautiful loan, it shall be increased many fold. If we don't live by that, well then we're no better than the people who used to rule this city. You know, Sihan, Mecca was a different place then. Hundreds of idol gods surrounded the Kaaba. And for people who were poor, like myself, life was very difficult. Why, thank you, sir. I'll take that. Uh, when I loan money, I expect to be paid back. Please. I need it. My family is hungry. You should have thought of that before. Hey! Get him! Welcome to Mecca! <laughs> You've all traveled so far. Remember, be generous in your offerings. Very generous, and the gods will bless you. <laughs> what? Oh, great and holy Shazar. Now I've given you everything I owe. You're paid to polish, not to pray, Sumaya. It's the pilgrimage season. I want these gods to shine. <laughs> oh, Mecca, thy name is kindness, and thy virtue is like a flower. In full bloom. I paid you. Now give me the answer. Patient Suhail. The prophecy of the divine arrows cannot be rushed. Oh. Well chosen, Suhail. Go ahead with your scheme to cheat the sword maker. For the arrows say you won't get caught. Indeed. Thief! Ah, you've a good eye for slaves, Please, man, set me free. Please. <laughs> I'll take him. Hello. <laughs> Remember this. They can whip your body, but your soul is free. It belongs to no one. You! Out of the way! Throw them again, boy. But remember, lose, and you become my slave. <gasps> no! <laughs> You're mine! <laughs> Get up and get out of here! <laughs> Look at all these people! The most successful pilgrimage in years! Good thing the gods are here in Mecca. Some of these pilgrims aren't too bright. They're paying twice what the goods are worth. <laughs> no, no, no! It's true! We'd be stupid not to raise the price on everything! What has become of our charity? These pilgrims are on a sacred journey to a holy place. We used to take pride in supplying water and shelter for the faithful. Now, it seems, we pride ourselves in taking advantage of their devotion. I won't listen to this! He's Abu Jahal. Abu Talib is our leader. Yes, and he's my brother! 
But that doesn't mean I have to sit here and listen to false accusations. The pilgrims would dry up and blow away if it weren't for us. We're worth ten times what we take. He thinks he can lecture us just because his clan takes care of the Kaaba. We must change our ways. Careful, Abu Dhabi. Change can be dangerous. Little did Abu Talib know that the nephew he raised, Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, was about to change the world forever. For at that time, at the age of 40, he was climbing toward a cave outside the city to be alone, to pray and ponder. He was troubled by all the injustice of Mecca, slavery, the mistreatment of women, greed, gambling, the sacrificing of babies and the reliance on idol gods made of wood and stone. Not the one God of Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. So as he did every year, he came to that cave. Suddenly, he was surrounded by light. When he looked up, he saw the archangel Gabriel standing before him. He was speechless. Read, said the angel. I don't know how was the reply. Gabriel repeated his command three times, and each time the reply was the same. And then Gabriel taught him, Read in the name of your Lord the Creator. He created man from a clot of blood. Read. Your Lord is the most bounteous who taught the use of the pen. He has taught man what he did not know. And then Gabriel vanished. Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, shook with fear and confusion. He stumbled out of the cave and ran for home. He doubted what he had seen, but on his way down the mountain, Gabriel appeared again and said, Muhammad, you are the messenger of God, and I am Gabriel. He tried to turn away, but no matter where he looked, Gabriel was there repeating his message. Muhammad, you are the messenger of God, and I am Gabriel. Once the angel was gone, Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, struggled for home. When he finally arrived, he was shivering. He asked Khadija to cover him. He told her everything he had seen and heard. He told her he feared for his sanity or, or that he had become possessed. But Khadija assured him that God would not allow an evil spirit to overtake a man like him, who had always told the truth and cared for the poor and needy. Soon after, Khadija went to her cousin, a religious scholar, and told him what had happened. Your husband is a prophet of God. The people will accuse him of lying and many other evils. Oh, and he will be cast out. Despite her cousin's warning, Khadija believed all her husband had told her, and she never hesitated in becoming Islam's first believer. And soon, others followed. I keep hearing rumors about Muhammad's secret meetings. Please, Abu Jahal. But he's teaching something. I don't know what it is yet, but his adopted son Zayn has joined him, and so has his cousin Ali. So what? The rest are beggars and slaves. But he must be punished. For what? For teaching something different. Look, if his followers were men of power, if his teachings were dangerous, I'd fall on him like an ocean. But this is Muhammad Abu Jahal. Al Amin, the honest one. Bah. For three years, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, preached in secret. It was during this time, Siham, that I first heard his teachings. I'm not sure we should be doing this. You have to hear him, Mother. We'll be all right, Jalila. Inside, quickly. There's more tonight than ever before. Thank you, Jeff.
Where do you go every night? To hear a prophet of God. What a feeling. To learn the way of Islam from God's messenger. Peace and blessing be upon him. His revelations, the Quran, offered the most beautiful words we had ever heard. He taught us, all the gods of Mecca are powerless. There's only one God, the God of Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. And you have to surrender everything to him. There's no such thing as rich or slave in the eyes of God. All are equal. And the poor aren't to be put down and despised. They're to be cared for. The Quran says, in the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, the most honored of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Women aren't possessions. They're God's creations and just as important as any man. Respect them. The earth is a gift from God. Treat it gently. You are its caretaker. And remember, you will all be judged according to your deeds. Many became Muslims that night. We showed our faith with a simple pledge. There is no God but God, and Muhammad is his prophet. There is no God but God. And Muhammad is his prophet. No God but Allah. And Muhammad is his prophet. You won't believe it, Amal. He says all men are created equal in the sight of God. You have to take me to him. I knew you would see the danger of Muhammad's preaching. Of course I see it. He must be stopped. You cannot stop Muhammad. What? Bilal, come back. You'll be whipped. They can whip my body, but not my soul. Fine, then leave your soul there, but get your body back here. What do you know about Muhammad? I know he is a prophet. Prophet? You see? It spreads like a disease. The gods will punish you for those words, Bilal. Muhammad says the idol gods are powerless. Ah? Uh -huh. Powerless? Powerless, he says. A slave says all the gods are powerless. Now, what do all of you say about Muhammad's harmless teachings? Our nephew preaches against us, Abu Talib. We also believe in an almighty God. Well, yes, but we don't say all the rest are worthless. What harm can be done by it? Those who listen to him are the poor and weak. Not all. They have been joined by Abu Bakr. Oh, yes. Mohammed's mighty friend has also deserted us. He's only one man. No. He is the first spark of a flame that must be extinguished. Yes. If Mohammed's preaching becomes popular and the gods are abolished, there will be no pilgrims. And if there are no pilgrims, there will be no more us. The messenger of God has sounded the warning call. What? Is Mecca under attack? I don't know. Come on. Sumaya, come to the Kaaba. Hurry. Yasir, quickly, come. What's going on? I don't know. <gasps> there he is. Up you go. See the messenger of God, Huda? There. He's about to speak. And then the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, O oh, people of Mecca, if I told you there is an army behind the hill coming to invade us, would you believe me? We would believe anything from you, Muhammad. You've always spoken the truth. And so he continued, O oh, people of Mecca, I beg you, abandon your gods and worship the one and only God. Save yourself from the fire of hell, for I cannot keep you from God's punishments. I am only like the man who sees the enemy coming and goes to warn his people of the approaching danger in order to save them. 
Our nephew is making a fool of us. Stop him, Abu Talib. Woe to you, Mohammed. Have you assembled us for this? Isn't it wonderful? Do you believe this man? Oh, yes. Every word. Ugh. He's leaving the hill. Let's go join him. How dare you betray Mecca! What? The gods aren't good enough for you? We'll protect you, messenger of God. How dare you insult the gods! Prophet! Ha! Lock arms! Don't let them hurt the prophet! Stay together! Don't let them through! You cannot do this, Bilal! If the messenger of God no longer preaches in secret, I will not follow in secret. What is this? <laughs> no, no, don't tell me. My slave has become a Muslim. <laughs> you may own my body, but my soul... Let me guess. You think your soul is free? <laughs> no. My soul is also a slave. But not to you. To God. That's where you're wrong, Bilal. It all belongs to me. Everything you are, everything you think, everything! Say it! Deny Muhammad's words and say your soul belongs to me! Say it, Bilal, say it! There is only one God, and Muhammad is his prophet! Let's see what you'll say unto the last! Deny Muhammad's words! Yes! One God! One God! Say I'm the owner of your soul, and I'll remove the stone! Say it! One God. Umayya, I come on behalf of Abu Bakr. He wants to buy this man from you. Name your price. All right. Ten gold pieces. <laughs> You want something, don't you? <laughs> you tell Abu Bakr, I would have taken three pieces of gold for that worthless soul. <laughs> he would have paid one hundred. Despite the beatings, Muhammad continues to preach and make converts of our pilgrims. How? The answer is simple. It lies in the Quran. What? His so-called revelations? They're nothing more than idle babblings. All due respect, Abu Jahal, Muhammad's revelations are neither idle nor babblings. They are powerful, simple, not of this world. Magic? It's the only reasonable explanation. Well then. We must stop him from using his magic poetry against us. Abu Talib, we have the greatest respect for you. But time and again we have pleaded with you to stop your nephew's preaching. And you have done nothing. He's threatening the peace in Mecca. A few years ago, he brought peace to Mecca. You praise his wisdom then, Abu Shahab. Remember when the Kaaba was being rebuilt? We were about to kill each other for the right to place the black stone. But Muhammad came and... The point is this! Abu Jahal, stop him, or someone else will! Out! Do you want bloodshed and fighting among Quraysh? Out now! You can see my situation, Abu Talib. It's getting more and more difficult to keep the peace. Please... Talk with your nephew. 
for the peace of Mecca. I will talk to him. Mohammed, close the door and come in. Please, sit. Son of my brother, Quraysh demand that you stop your preaching. If you don't, I fear I cannot protect you. I am an old man, Mohammed. I cannot fight these people, my own neighbors, my own tribe. People we have known all our lives. Is what you preach so important, Mohammed, that you and I must die for it? That there must be bloodshed in the city? For the peace of Mecca, stop your preaching. This made Mohammed peace and blessing upon him very sad. But he answered, saying, If they put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left, I will not stop what I am doing. I will continue until either the word of God prevails or I perish in the process. Mohammed, say and do what you please. This uncle will never abandon you. Not now, not as long as I live. I say we are Muhammad's clan, and we will stand by him and protect him, no matter what the cost. Why? Why must we become the enemy of Mecca for one man? Because he is our nephew, and because he has done nothing wrong. Ah, the great Hamza speaks. Good thing you're swift with the sword, brother, because Muhammad's forcing you to use it. Well, I'm not dying for him just because he says he saw an angel. Muhammad continues to preach despite all we do to him and his followers. Please stop him before he ruins everything. He's coming. He's praying. Infidel! I won't let you overthrow our gods! Heretic! How dare you walk away! Oh, Hamza, you're back. What is it? Ah, oh, but you all insulted your nephew. He said horrible things in front of the whole city. What did my nephew do? Nothing. He just walked away. <laughs> he tried praying here just this morning, but I drove him away. Um, ah, if you want to fight someone, fight me, you coward. How dare you insult Mohammed when I too am of his religion? No. Oh. Uh, I didn't know you followed Mohammed. I do now. Do what you must. I know what you teach is true, nephew. I feel it in every word you've spoken. That's why I can say this. There is no God but Allah, and you are his prophet. Confess the gods or die! Do it! 
No, no! Do it! Say it, mother. Tell them what they want to hear. Listen to your son, Sumaya. <gasps> Tell me truthfully. Ma, would you deny God and his prophet just to live? I... I... And neither will I. There is only one God. And Muhammad is his prophet. Do you mock me? Then those words shall be your last! The first martyrs of Islam. Poor Sumaya. Poor Yasu. Thank God, Amar lives. How is he? The Prophet is doing all he can to ease his pain. But he fears for our lives, and says that those who can should go to Abyssinia. Abyssinia? It's ruled by a Christian king, a kind man, who might allow us to live there. And I've been asked to lead the group, and I'll need some strong men to help me. Go, Malek. We'll be fine. A lot of ground to cover before they find out we're gone. They could be in Abyssinia by now! Tell Khalid to take some men and go after them. They must be brought back and punished so all will know that rebellion will not be tolerated in Mecca. <laughs> Is yours. Now bless me for my generosity. Well, excellent work. I understand you know the Abyssinian king. I do, quite well, as a matter of fact. Good. This is for him. Oh. You'll get your share if you can convince him to turn the Moslems over to us. If anyone can do it, it is I. Ah, <laughs> it's good to see you again, Amr. All these gifts are for you. Your generosity is overwhelming. You deserve much more. I understand you are concerned about these few who have emigrated from your city. Rebels, sir. They stirred up trouble in our city, and they will do the same in yours. Let us do the favor of taking them from you. They seem peaceable enough to me. They have created a new religion which means to destroy all others. How do you answer? Dear King. Bow to the King. We bow to no man, sir. Only to our God. <laughs> you see, dear King, anarchy already. I let it pass. I'm more concerned about their attitude before God than before me. Continue. Not very long ago, dear king, we were people living in ignorance. Then God sent us a prophet. He called us to worship one God and to always tell the truth. He asked us to love and care for our parents, to help our neighbors and give to the needy. He taught us that our time here is brief 
and that everything around us is a trust from God. The earth, our bodies, we must take care of them and we will stand before God in a coming day and answer for our deeds. What they teach, Amr, is the gospel of Jesus. No, dear king, they... they do not respect your religion. They say that... that Jesus is not the son of God, but merely a man. Of Jesus, we say what our prophet said to us, that he is the servant of God, his messenger, his word, and his spirit which he cast upon Mary the Blessed Virgin. What we believe, and what you believe, are like these two beams of light, separate, yet coming from the same source. I would not give you up for a mountain of gold. You may live here as long as you like. As for you, Amar, take your gifts and return to Mecca. Thought that they could out gamble Abu Lahab. Won everything they had. <laughs> it wasn't you two I beat, was it? Abu Jaha's nephew, Umar ibn al Khattab, has joined the Muslims. Umar? Umar the Great? The man in Umar? Yes, Umar, yes! No! Not Umar. Seems he heard the Quran. The beauty of it cleansed his heart, he said. I know just what to do. Hear me, oh ye gods. We can't do anything to stop the Muslims. Maybe you can help. Oh, shut up, you drunken fool. Strike them with the plague. Would you please? That's it. You solved it. I did? We'll treat them like outcasts. Cut them off from everything. Great. Then they'll leave here and spread their lies throughout all of Arabia. We won't let them go anywhere. We'll keep them right here and watch them starve. Starve? How? We will sign an agreement and hang it in the Kaaba. It will say that no one shall sell or buy anything from Muhammad's followers or those who protect him. No one shall marry them. No one shall assist them in any way. They will be as outcasts to all of Mecca till Muhammad sees the error of his ways. Muslims were cut off. Most were afraid to stay in their own homes. In order to survive, they fled to a nearby hill. Thank you. I'm sorry there couldn't be more. I'm still hungry, Mama. I know, darling, I know. They won't let us go, my son. You think Malik knows what's happening to us? I sent a message, but I don't know, Hadi.
You can't leave now, Malik. Not alone. I can't stay here while my family suffers. That's all there is, Amar. The Prophet's wife, Khadija, has sold everything she has for these few provisions. Still, it won't last for long. Who would have thought this would go on for three years? You are weak, messenger of God. I know Islam teaches patience and perseverance, but you can't keep giving up your food for others. What is it? Tell Muhammad, <coughs> I will deliver his message to Quraysh. You are not well. I'm well enough. I'm sorry to so see you're not feeling well, Abu Talib. I doubt that. If I die, the rule of this council falls to you. Then it would be easier to deal with Muhammad, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Well then, what I have to say may please you. Muhammad has revealed something to me. If it is false, he is yours to do with as you please. If it is true, you will end your boycott on him and all Muslims. What is it? It is this. The boycott pact you signed and hung in the Kaaba has been eaten by incense. Except for the following words. In the name of God. <gasps> Just in time to go home. It was a better time. A little season of peace. Oh, it looks wonderful. Thank you, Jalila. Malik? Jalila, come quickly. The Prophet's wife is sick. Khadija? Oh, no. Go, Jalila. She's gone. <laughs> Twenty-five years they shared. She was the mother of his children. The first believer, his friend. We called this time the year of sadness because Abu Talib was dying too. Come near. Quraysh asked one thing before I die, that I will get your word to leave their religion alone. We will not attack or preach against you, if you agree not to preach against us. Then the Prophet, peace and blessing upon him, said, I will.
Did you hear? <laughs> it's over! And quickly added, all I ask is one word of assurance from you. And if you give it, all of Arabia and Persia will be yours. Speak then. Witness with me that there is one God. And deny all the others. I knew when they brought you to me as a boy that you were something special. And you are. You are. Well, in name at least. What? Call yourself king if you want. But don't ever get in my way. Good. Now let's solve problem number one, shall we? The Muslims? No. Muhammad. <laughs> so free peace abu jahal where swords have failed us words shall cut deep ah our poets they're turning the people against muhammad as we speak even abu lahab is doing well beware friends from afar my nephew over there has revolution in his heart revolution he says he's a prophet but what he really wants is to make himself king over us all! Make him suffer! When Muhammad says our ways are weak, when he says our gods are nothing more than silent stone, he's not only attacking you, he's attacking your fathers. He's saying they were wicked and stupid. Shall we endure such dishonor? It won't be long before the beatings begin. Now there's no Abu Talib to protect us. And nowhere to go. Bilal, right? Yes, do I? I'm Bara. I came last year with 12 others to hear the Prophet. Ah, from Yathrib, yes! We follow Islam now, with all our hearts. You hear that? 12 believers in Yathrib. No, hundreds. The Prophet must come to Yathrib. We need... We can't talk now. The Messenger of God will meet you on the hill at Aqaba tonight. Messenger of God, please, say you'll come to Yathrib. Our city is filled with bloodshed, brother fighting brother. Only you and your message can bring peace. Say you'll come. If you do, we promise to protect and defend you. God has opened a door, O messenger of God. The prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, accepted. And he instructed all of us to leave for Yathrib. I'm too scared to leave at night. The messenger of God doesn't want anyone to know we're leaving. Why couldn't we leave with everyone else? Shh. We couldn't all leave at the same time. It'd be too dangerous. It's time.
but Muhammad stayed to protect those who were left behind. Now, it's time for us to decide what to do with Muhammad. Throw him in prison. No, exile the man. Yes, yes! Take him to the edge of the desert and drop him off. Let him go. He's out of Mecca. Isn't that what we wanted? Not if he's going to build an empire in Yethrib. Well, what if we kill him? Uh huh? But, but whoever kills him will be attacked by Muhammad's clan and others. Who will, will be the one? Who said it must be just one? Take one strong man from each clan and kill him together. That way, the blood of Muhammad will be on everyone's hands. Then, there can be no revenge. Great idea. <laughs> 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 Ugh. Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, knew of their plot. And on that night, he asked his cousin Ali, God's blessings be upon him to sleep in the Prophet's bed, knowing no harm would come to him. He's there. When do we go in? We don't. We wait until he leaves the house for his morning prayers. Then... As the night drew on, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, prayed. And one by one, the assassins fell asleep. I'm sure. In a few hours, your hundred camels will be mine. See any footprints? Oh, he's in there. There's no way he could have gotten in here without breaking up this web or this nest. You fool! Later that night, before leaving for Yathra. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, looked down on Mecca. 
It was a city filled with memories for him. Where his children were born. Where his wife had died. He said, Of all God's earth, thou art the dearest place unto me, and the nearest unto God. And had not my people driven me out, I would not have left thee. No man can survive this long in the desert. Maybe the reports are wrong. Maybe he was caught after all. He wasn't captured. And he will be here. He is coming! The prophet is coming! For the first time, we were able to worship without fear. The days were long and filled with hard work. But oh, we were happy. Now be good, Huda. Mind your teacher. Come on, Hadi. I'm gonna stay here and help Papa Malik build the mosque. After your lesson, the prophet says you must learn to read. Lessons first. For my children's teacher. It's beautiful. <sighs> Messenger of God, let me carry that. You're the prophet. It's time for you to take a rest. The prophet, peace and blessing be upon him taught us that all Muslims were brothers and sisters, one community standing shoulder to shoulder in prayer. And he wrote a document declaring all people in Yathrib would live as equals, in peace, regardless of race or religion. Allah. Allah. Akbar. Allah. What is it? He's calling us to prayer. Mama, are we the happiest people who ever lived? <laughs> what do you think? I think... Yes. Because... Yathrib was renamed the city of the Prophet. El Medina. Ah, that's it. Everything the Muslims left behind has been accounted for. Good. We'll take it all on our caravan to Damascus and trade every last scrap of it. It belongs to us now. They have taken all our possessions. And after they sell them in Damascus, they'll be on their way back to Mecca with baskets full of gold. They continue to cut off trade to us. 
and we are starving again. Oh, messenger of God, I know you hate violence, but... And then the prophet, peace and blessing upon him, said, We will go out and meet the caravan, and take back what is ours. <coughs> Muhammad has left Medina with 300 men to take this caravan. Ride to Mecca. Tell them to send an army as fast as they can to protect these riches. <laughs> Turn here and take the sea route back home. Our army leaves this morning, and you are going to fight in my place. I won't do it. Fight for me, and I'll consider your debt pay. Refuse, and I'll kill you here on the spot. But I, uh... uh... <clears throat> Assist! Finally. <laughs> Abu Jahl is just two days' march from the Muslim camp. Tell him I'm out of danger and to turn back. But he has them outnumbered. Three to one. Not good enough. Not against Muhammad. Tell him to turn back to Mecca. By all the gods, I have not come this far to turn back. No, not until Muhammad is dead. When the prophet... Peace and blessing be upon him. Found out we were no longer facing 30 armed escorts, but an entire army. He called for Shura, the council of his people. I guess I am the last to speak. Whatever you choose, we will do. Then the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Go forward full of faith, for God has promised either the caravan or victory on the battlefield. We met the Meccan army at the Wells of Badr. Have my spears ready. Stay close to me, and above all, Help me find Bilal. The battle began according to tradition. Hamza took up his sword and called two to join him. Obaida, Ali.
Abu Lahab? You've returned. I've paid my debt. One last thing you should know. God fights on the side of your nephew. Help me. No one will help me. Please. That fool! Idiot! I told him to turn back! We'll get another chance. That's not the point. We lost our first chance. Now they think God fights on their side. Mark my words. It will be near impossible to bring him down. He's only a man. No! You're only a man. His kind comes around but once. As the gods are my witness, every scrap of this gold will be used against him. We'll buy up weapons and horses. I will show Mohammed whose power is greater. Mecca has raised an army of 3,000, and they are coming. We are only 700. After consultation, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, declared. We will meet the approaching enemy at the mountain of Ahud. We are ready, messenger of God. The prophet says you must not leave this hill, whether we're winning or losing. You must not let them attack from the rear. Dead. I saw him fall myself. Hear me! The day is in return for better. Today our gods have won. Our dead are in paradise. Yours are in hellfire. Believe what you wish. So long as Muhammad is dead. Muhammad lives! <laughs> Let him live to know this. For every one of our men. 
men who died today, we have killed four of yours. How many is? Ah, now this is the glory Mecca was meant to have. Finish your sacrifices and come out, Abu Sufyan. You're the one who got us here. Ahmed lives. So what? He's lost Hamza and 70 others. Come, join the celebration. How dare anyone accept glory when these two words can still be spoken? Muhammad lives! Then it is settled. This is no longer a battle between the Muslims and Mecca alone. No. Every tribal leader here pledges no rest until all of Arabia is against Muhammad. Until the words, Muhammad lives, come. Muhammad is no more. Islam is through. None will be left alive. I'll give all I have to put an end to Muhammad. Ten thousand? We've defeated armies twice our size, four times our size, but ten thousand. There's no way we can keep them out. They'll divide and come at us from all directions. What do you say, messenger of God? In Persia, when we feared attack led by horsemen, we dug a trench around us. never been done not in all of Arabia I say we wait find the narrowest section and lead your men over no keep trying sir Keep trying at one place and fill in the blasted thing at another. Thirty days we've tried. The troops are losing heart. Talk with them then. You're a man of words. Get them excited. Whip them into a frenzy. That won't do. They think God is with the Muslims. Very well, then. Prepare for one last all-out attack at dawn. From all sides, we'll take them by sheer numbers. God willing, only a few of their soldiers will clear the trench, and we'll handle them before they get to the city. But if they do enter the streets... We're to drop these from the windows. Yes. Oh, job. I'm so scared. Don't be. If we die, we'll be together in paradise. Barricade the door after we go. to prove that thou art mighty. Muhammad also prayed. Peace and blessing be upon him. God, revealer of the book, swift caller to account. Whatever power it is that protects Muhammad, overcome it. 
turn the Confederates to flight. And show these Muslims once and for all, thy power reigns supreme. Turn them to flight and cause them to quake. saved us. One day, the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, looked at us and said, I dreamed that I entered the Kaaba with its key in my hand. We shall journey to Mecca for the pilgrimage and worship at the Holy Kaaba. He's coming here? Without weapons? He knows we can't crush a peaceful pilgrimage. All of Arabia would rise up against us. Blast him! Blast Muhammad! There is nothing we can do. Let them in. What? Bear the shame of letting Muhammad worship in Mecca? It's over. I'm sending Suhail. I'll let him promise the world. But the Muslims will not enter Mecca. We suggest a compromise. A peace treaty. We promise not to attack any of your people, and you promise the same. For ten years. We will be allowed to enter Mecca. Worship at the Kaaba? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> Starting next year. You came back without even entering Mecca? But we will next year, and every year after that. For ten years. For three days at a time. Oh, to have ten years of peace. Ten years. Yes. The message of Islam can travel far in ten years.
God's prophet. I bear witness that there is no God but God, and you are his messenger. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and you, Muhammad, are his messenger. الرحيم آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد Muslims have been killed. They have broken the treaty. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, decided. It is time to return to Mecca. Yes, Messenger of God. Messenger of God. On to Mecca! Now they are the army of 10,000, with our greatest leaders at their head. I've come to speak with Muhammad. Show your hands. Now! It would be foolish of me to try and hurt him now. That never stopped you before. I come in peace! You can't blame these men. Naturally, they are concerned. Yes. Forgive us. We have been cruel and unjust. We have stolen, tortured, killed. We will not, cannot resist you any longer. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said. There will be no executions, no purges. Mecca will be healed by the spirit of Islam. I'm certain it will, and I too must witness that there is no God but God, and that you, Muhammad, are his prophet. I'll prepare the city. I am glad that despite my best efforts, I can say Muhammad lives. From rulers to the simple robes of Islam. 
May it always be so. I'll never forget the feeling of that day. It was filled with indescribable joy. A few years later, in Medina, after a short illness, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, died. He was 63. He always lived a simple and humble life, giving everything he had to the poor. I wish I had met the Prophet. I wish I had heard him speak. Yes. But the words of God live on. Where will you go now? I... I don't know. I know. Maybe you can stay here and work in Mecca. What kind of work can you do? Oh, it's beautiful. I used to have a loom like yours, but I lost it. I lost everything. <gasps> If he had some work, he could use our loom, don't you think? Yes. Yes, he could. Sir, you can have fashion school. No, it, it belongs to you. No, it belongs to you now. Come on, we'll take him to the market together. <laughs> 